Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, in this uh, tutorial of a piece by simulation, I am going to uh, give you the whole demonstration that how to assimilate the single phase MOSFET bridge inverter with a unipolar and bipolar sinusoidal pulse width modulation that, that is uh, SPWM. You can see uh, these lovely waveforms are at the uh, cover that uh, for the uh, SPWM technique. So I'm going to give it uh, the whole detail on this. So please subscribe the, the channel and press bell icon so that you keep on getting the notification for the latest uploads because we are uh, actually uploading uh, piece by simulation tutorials as well as the lot of hardware practical demonstrations of the lab I have also uploaded different other topics is also available on the channel so you can please uh, visit the our channel page and uh, playlist so that you can find the different uh, uh, topics also you can uh, take uh, uh, like uh, links or get the link in the uh, description box so now let's uh, start with this one so first of all let me tell you that what are the uh, unipolar bipolar sinusoidal pulse width modulation uh, actually when we have a single phase MOSFET bridge inverter in that one we have a four switches uh, and the four to trigger the, those four switches we require the certain uh, mod, uh, pulse width modulation technique so here we are actually utilizing the sinusoidal pulse width modulation this one uh, waveform is belongs to the bipolar sinusoidal pulse width modulation why it is called sinusoidal pulse width modulation because here our modulating signal is basically a sinusoidal signal you can see this uh, dark uh, sinusoidal signal it is of a fundamental frequency of a 50 hertz because of our inverter output we want the 50 hertz supply output and uh, here you can see that this is the higher frequency carrier wave signal uh, which is shown by the triangular one and it can be in the kilohertz like uh, in our simulation we are going to utilize as of a 10 kilohertz so this uh, carrier signal and when modulating signal both are interact with each other and we can get uh, the with the comparison of this modulating signal over the carrier signal these kind of uh, pulse widths when you can see that because this modulating signal of sinusoidal is changing in the magnitude from 0 to maximum to back to 0 to negative maximum and 0 again so because of that you getting the different um, uh, width modulation over here in the pulses and these pulses we are going to apply to the switches of the uh, your inverter and uh, complementary switches uh, pulses are here also and you can see that uh, corresponding output uh, phase voltage we get for the uh, sinusoidal pulse modulation in the bipolar case and this is the uh, line voltage you can see that the line voltage is having both polarity that is why it is called bipolar and when you do the Fourier analysis of it you will get a fundamental frequency component which is shown by this uh, lightly highlighted uh, sinusoidal component okay so this is the sinusoidal pulse width modulation in the bipolar case now what about the unipolar SPWM when you have a unipolar SPWM uh, you have actually two modulating signal uh, 180 degree out of phase to each other so here we have two sinusoidal signals one darker one lighter one both are 180 degree out of phase and the same carrier frequency of a high frequency is uh, over here and uh, accordingly we are getting corresponding to the uh, dark one and the light one sinusoidal uh, modulating signals we are getting these uh, pulses over here for the main switches and the complementary switches of the leg and now based on that we will get the uh, this modulation uh, uh, so signals we are getting these phase voltage output of your inverter and you can see that here the output of the line voltage of the inverter is uh, having a one polarity either positive or negative and if you do the Fourier analysis again you get the fundamental frequency component of it so this is all about of your unipolar uh, sinusoidal pulse width modulation and now let me uh, go to the uh, your simulation one I have already created this simulation diagram for this on my schematic to save the time so that we can understand the different uh, uh, aspect of it now you can get the IRF 840 MOSFET and D1N uh, 4002 uh, diodes from the place part option you can make the circuit this is the, our single phase uh, MOSFET bridge uh, 1 and 2 is a complementary switch 3 and 4 is also complementary switch of another leg this uh, uh, is being fed by a DC source of a 10 volt here we have to take the output across these two legs 
now to create the high frequency uh, triangular signal we are using this v pulse option over here you can get it over here in the place part option v pulse and uh, you will get this kind of a, a v pulse option over here depending upon its input value it will uh, generate a triangular high frequency carrier signal also you can take v sign uh, source v sign source over here to generate the sinusoidal signal also uh, we require a computer so you can collect the computer by uh, this uh, typing this op amp you will get this op amp you can place this over here uh, anywhere as per your requirement and depending upon polarity you can connect the different thing similarly you can get the irf uh, 840 also similarly you will get uh, uh, like a d1 and 4002 uh, diodes also over here Similarly, you will also get VDC source. So all these things are available and to connect the things we have a connecting wire option also. I have already demonstrated all of these things in your in my previous video. So you can follow this one. Now after making the connection, you can see that this particular comparator output is switching this uh, MOSFET 1 and MOSFET 4 and this comparator output is switching uh, MOSFET 2 and MOSFET uh, 3. So these are nothing but the switching pattern and uh, our carrier signal is going to be like uh, in the uh, this way that means uh, for the carrier in here is negative and here is positive because we have to create the complementary signal. Similarly our sinusoidal signal is also going in the complementary way over here. Here we are taking the 18 volt uh, magnitude uh, sinusoidal signal of 50 hertz. Uh, here is actually when the carrier signal is maximum value is minus 20 to 20. Then and it, if it is 18 then it gives the under modulation condition. If the value is 20 then it gives level modulation and more than 20 it's get uh, over modulation. So here we are simulating for the under modulation. Now to explain that how to generate a like a triangular wave, uh, let me go back to the presentation. You can see that here if your uh, triangular wave is like this one of a high frequency, its period is of a 10 kilohertz, then its time period will be become 0.1 millisecond. So you can see that uh, for a 0.1 millisecond, your signal is going from minus 20 to plus 20 and plus 20 to back minus 20 again and then you can see that uh, your rise of uh, this minus 20 to plus 20 is 0 0.05 milliseconds and similarly your fall of this one from plus 20 to minus 20 from uh, like 0 0.05 millisecond again so uh, utilizing this particular uh, fact we are going to uh, like uh, give the v pulse over here so our lower value is minus 20 higher value is 20 Time delay we don't require any so we have put only 1 nanosecond over here the time of rise is 0 0.05 millisecond as I have shown you and the time of fall is 0 0.05 millisecond as I have shown you. Now the pulse width is also nothing much of importance so we have again given the 1 nanosecond. The period is going to be the as per the 10 kilohertz frequency so it is 0 0.1 millisecond. And uh, these are the other uh, requirement data. Now for the new simulation, you have to create new simulation profile as I have already created it. So we are going to uh, take the editing of a simulation profile. Here I can show you that uh, what is my simulation profile. Simulation is going to run for the 20 millisecond. You can see and the maximum step size is 0 0.1 millisecond that I'm going to set. Now I'm going to simulate it over here. Let quickly observe that what are my outputs. Uh, after simulation, you can see that uh, these are my outputs. So, so many waveforms over here. So, let me separate all these waveforms by adding the extra plots over here. So, we can see that it is our uh, carrier signal, which is a triangular uh, one. Now, for the modulating one, uh, we are going to shift it over here. You can see that this is my modulating signal if we make it uh, like thick over here so you can see that this is my modulating signal and this is green one is my carrier signal of a high frequency triangular wave now uh, we will separate these op amp outputs over here these are the pulse width modulated uh, triggering signals we can see that its uh, values are getting changed we will change its uh, color and just to understand the uh, different signal uh, values okay now the other MOSFET output I am going to shift. How to shift all these things I have given in 
my previous videos so you can follow those things and you can uh, like uh, uh, understand that how to create like create and change all these things uh, make it of uh, some other color okay now you can see that this is my uh, triangular pulse uh, triangular uh, carrier signal this is my modulating signal sinusoidal this is my final output voltage of a bipolar sinusoidal pulse width modulation which is having both polarities and now uh, if you want to zoom it so you can take the x axis uh, double click on the x axis you will get user defined range you try to just uh, scale it off a 0. Point, uh, sorry 5 millisecond only so you can see that from when the your modulating signal is going from 0 to maximum value at that time the different pulse widths is are creating and accordingly we are getting the effect on the output voltage over here and if you want to observe the whole period you have to uh, take it back to the 20 millisecond so this is nothing but our uh, bipolar sinusoidal pulse width modulation now i'll uh, quickly go and look for the other uh, conditions uh, of a unipolar sinusoidal pulse width modulation so let me open my that uh, already saved project of a uh, unipolar now i am going to show you that how these things are working the same uh, mosfet bridge is over here same connection is over here same mos uh, like op amps is over here same carrier uh, generator is over here with the help of a v pulse only the thing is changed that here in spite of uh, making it complementary here we make our two different sinusoidal uh, which are actually 180 degree out of phase here it is uh, for the under modulation condition plus 18 and here it is uh, minus 18 over 50 hertz we are going to give it to our uh, comparators and here our at the negative terminal v plus is over here we are going to observe the output across it and all these things are there don't forget to uh, include your ground otherwise you will get the error uh, your simulation that uh, every terminal is floating so always connect the ground over uh, at the certain place now for the simulation profile look at here again it is 20 millisecond for one time period we are going to simulate it and uh, its uh, maximum step size is 0 0.1 millisecond so again we are going to give this one simulation let uh, see that after the simulation it will show the color uh, 